We'll call to order the regular meeting of the East Point City Council on Tuesday, December the 4th at 7 p.m. Please rise for the invocation given by Councilwoman Sarah Lucido and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear God, we ask for your guidance as we undertake the business of our city. We ask you, as we thank you for the many blessings you have given us, help us to lead our community with patience, tolerance, and understanding. We ask that you direct us to do what is best for all of our residents. It is in your name we pray, amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I stand corrected. The meeting is starting at 726. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico. Here. Councilmember Lucido. Here. Councilmember Kleinfeld. Here. Councilmember Owens. Here. Mayor Pixley. Here. Um, our next item is to approve the agenda, and we have one additional item to be included that Ms. Lance gave to everyone, so I would entertain a motion for that. Relates to the Motorola radio equipment for the police department. I sure. think I think we might have another item, uh, Mr. Blum. Um, yes, there was supposed to have been a closed session item for um, a pending lawsuit settlement discussion. Uh, Mr. Ferrand will be here later for that. Okay. Madam Mayor, I do not have an update regarding the Department of Justice case, so unless the council has anything they need to speak to me about in closed session, there would be no need for uh, that agenda item this evening. Okay. So the item then would be the update from um, attorney, so it would still be pending litigation. All right, and then also the uh, Motorola radio equipment. So can I get a motion to add those two things to our agenda for tonight? Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion to add the Motorola radio equipment uh, to the end of new business and to remove uh, closed session item A for the DOJ pending litigation and to add uh, pending litigation as the new closed session item. Support. We would support it. Please call the roll. Council Member DeMonico? Uh, yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. So our next item is a hearing of the public with any item not related to the marijuana regulation. Mr. Curley. You have three minutes. Three minutes, start. Um, first of all, I think that uh, all of us here tonight in this chambers, as well as everybody watching television, uh, welcome you back, Mayor Pixley. Um, I know for a fact that you've went through an awful lot for your surgery and you're still not 100%, but uh, I think she needs a round of applause for being back tonight, folks. Oh, real quickly, uh, that's not part of my three minutes. <laughs> um, as, as, as we know, um, the better we have a history of, a, of any city, the better that city is. And um, when the, the old city hall was torn down, the old pictures of the judges were sent over to the courthouse. And the pictures of the mayors, uh, starting back, I think, since 1937, were put downstairs in a basement. Now I know that some of those pictures probably need new frames because some of those frames are probably 75 years old, uh, but the other ones are new and I realize that uh, there may be two or three ex-mayors that you don't have portraits of, but um, I'm asking that uh, the council please consider uh, putting the pictures up here in the chambers. You know, when people walk in here and they say, oh, I, I didn't realize so-and-so was the mayor in 1943, um, that's part of our history. You know, once we lose our history and heritage, uh, we're no longer going to move. So I would just ask and plead with uh, the members of the council that you would consider uh, directing the administration to repair those portraits and hang them up. That would be great. And the other thing is, um, shortly after I retired of being mayor, uh, when I was mayor, we had the D.A.R.E. program. And I'm not still as clear as, as to why 
the city decided to abandon the DARE program. But you know what? Um, there's different ways you can do it. Uh, we don't have to do it the old way. But I always maintain someone would say, well, you know, there's a lot of kids, and some of those kids still go out and do bad things. But you know what? If we save one child, it's worth every penny that you would spend. So I would like to have you put on that on your thinking caps, too, and uh, reinstate the D.A.R.E. program. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Curley. Does anyone else wish to be heard on any subject other than the marijuana? Ma'am, please come forward and state your name. My name is Lynn, uh, Lynn Salafia, and I'm here to propose the idea of, um, in all our uh, city public buildings, putting in um, recycling boxes for the water that people drink for, say, like for the city council. I know that there is a recycling box in, in the chambers, but... Um, I was hoping that maybe you would consider putting them in, say, the public library, the uh, lobby of the police office or police department um, out here where people pay their bills and get their dog tags and stuff like that. And that was it, just recycling bins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else, please? Mr. Lamo. I don't know how I should address this guy. I don't know. New neighbor or what? <laughs> um, Mayor, Council, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Lamo. I live at 1608 Fort Lincoln. We have a nice neighborhood. We had a house you were about to condemn that's back in business. It's been sold on Lincoln. I'm here because of our beautiful street. The paving job, my job in the Department of Highway was that type of work. This job sucks. <laughs> it's, not, it's not 18 minutes, 18 months old and they were sealing it already, the joints. That type of pavement should not have happened. That's what I did for 40 years. It's terrible. Mr. Andary's place. We have a spot there, what's known as the city council pond. Because when it's flooded, when it rains, it goes beyond the city or the state limits and it covers the entire sidewalk area. It's a shame. There's a structure there that should have been taken care of. It's a shame. This is a good city. We have a lot of good businesses here to treat our businesses like the highway department. And if we had money in it, we did, is a total shame. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wish to be heard? Karen Moragin, East Point resident. Um, so uh, again, in regards to the petting zoos, uh, first thing I want to do is I, I've got to um, make a correction on the record. I sent everyone uh, roughly a six-page report, and I got back um, conflicting information from the USDA yesterday. Um, there's not enough time in this three minutes to go into it. I'm more than happy to go into further detail after the meeting. Unfortunately, there's conflicting information in regards to the USDA. Um, they're just, they're not doing right. Um, you know, um, just briefly, they originally told me to file the complaint and then, you know, another department head said, no, we don't deal with that. Um, so then I'm given numerous uh, phone numbers to call. I go through all those numbers, no results. I'm still waiting for MDAR to respond back to me. Um, you know, in regards to these petting zoos, you know, each petting zoo I've been to this year, there's been neglect going on with the rabbits and um, the other animals are not separated as they should be under the MDARD requirements. Um, 
This is not a natural environment. This is far too chaotic and stressful for these animals. There is no one checking in these animals when they arrive on the grounds to see if they're properly secured. Are they standing in urine and feces? Who's checking to see if there's any discharge from their eyes, their nose, their mouth? Where's the vaccination reports? You know, who is checking to see, are these animals sick? Are they stressed? Are they ill? Uh, they should not be on the grounds. I've warned you guys several times about the transmission of zoonotic diseases, and you went ahead and you had the petting zoo in October. Now, you know, I want you to think about this long and hard. At some point, somebody's going to get sick. They're going to trans. They're going to contact contract one of those zoonotic diseases, and think about what an epic public relations nightmare that's going to be for East Point. You knew, and you didn't stop it. No one is disinfecting these pens prior to the setup or tear down. You have 30 um, seconds. These petting zoos need to be canceled with the inclement weather. I'm going to finish up during the second period, but I want you to think about this long and hard without a full ban on petting zoos. You have no way to stop private residents from getting a permit and having the petting zoos in the park. And there will be no animal control, which means your further neglect. Your Thank your you. Time is up. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on anything else besides the marijuana regulations? All right. First hearing in the public is closed. Move on to approval of the minutes. And the first one is the regular meeting of November the 20th, 2018. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to approve the regular meeting minutes, uh, November 20th, 2018. Support. Move to support it. Please call the roll. Council Member Domenico. Yes. Council Member Owens. Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld. Yes. Mayor Pixley. Yes. Council Member Lucido. Yes. I'm sorry, I should have abstained except I watched the meeting and they were right. <laughs> okay. All right, item B is a closed session from November the 20th and these were sent by Mr. Sabota to each of the council members. Madam Mayor, I motion to approve the minutes for the closed session of November 20th, 2018. Support. Support. Who is supported? Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido. Yes. Council Member Owens. Yes. Mayor Pixley. Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. All right, our next item is what everybody is here for, and I thank you for everybody coming um, to express your opinion, and we want to hear from everybody. So we're gonna follow our normal procedure that each person gets three minutes, so if you have a 10-minute speech before I call you, will you just think about reducing it down to three minutes? Um, we will be... Um, Taking it all in, council will be taking the notes. Next week we have a meeting, uh, it is our audit report, and we will discuss it among ourselves um, at that time, because we've been given a great deal of information in a very short period of time, and it takes a while for us to absorb it. Um, and Mr. Sabota would like to make a, um, a comment here about that as well. Uh, for anyone who is planning to or has already submitted information to the city council members here at the dais, if you would be kind enough to please provide one copy for the official record to Mr. Altimus. Mr. Altimus, will you please raise your hand? So anyone who is planning on giving anything to the council in writing, please make sure that Mr. Altimus receives the first copy so that it is incorporated as part of the official record of this hearing. Also, Madam Mayor, uh, as soon as you open the hearing, I would like to add officially two written correspondences that were received by the office and uh, should be considered official correspondence uh, received in the hearing. Okay, are you all ready? All right, um, let's, let's go on with the two um, emails that we've, we've heard from our local residents. And this is related to, um, they could not be here today because of business activities. So Mr. Sabota is gonna read these into the record, please. Uh, I'm, I would I'd like to just mention, uh, I don't think they were public comments. I was actually surprised to see them in our packet um, I don't know if those residents express that they want their emails to be heard. I, I, did I'm not, a, I did write a letter back to Mrs. France and told her because she could not be here that we would read it into the record. 
Okay, if they would prefer it, that's fine by me. I just, it, when someone emails a complaint or something, I don't know if they would have known. It would have been read out loud, that's all. And I think related to Mr. Kleinfeld, if we're going to include certain things like that, I think I'd well, like to can, know Well, we can always include it in our documentation that goes to Mr. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Altimus. Altimus. All right, so let's go on and get our, our view from the people. So, sir. What do we want to do with these? We'll, we'll do it at the end so okay. we can get all these people in. All right, who would like to go first? This is Reed. I don't know if you're going by Carol Reed anymore. Yes, I am. Carol Reed, Raleigh, and, uh, no, Please Wagner speak Reed. directly into the microphone because it's very difficult. First of all, thank you very much for having this and thank you for letting me speak. I wanted to put a face on a medical marijuana user. It's me. Um, I am for letting uh, a business come into the city, uh, probably on Kelly Road near 8 Mile, I think would be a good location. And you would be able to make some judgments off of maybe one or two people coming into the city. Um, I've worked with Suzanne Pixley for many years, Frank Ecovetti for many years. I'm born and raised in this city. My grandpa and grandma had a farmhouse across from the Dairy Queen. Uh, my mom and dad had four different houses in the city. I've had three different houses. My son currently lives here. And um, three, of, three people from East Point started the medical marijuana issue in Michigan. I'm the executive secretary. I was the girl sitting at the table with the guys. So I told them we have to be professional. This was uh, in 2000, the year 2000. And um, we went on to have 300,000 medical marijuana patients in Michigan now after the work we started out doing. And you can't tell by looking at me why I use marijuana, but I use it because I have no appetite. I got exposed to black mold. Um, I can't sleep at night. Um, I have post-traumatic stress disorder. I have hardening of the arteries, and I have uh, severe anxiety. And that helps with me having an appetite. It helps my nerves, and it helps me sleep. So you're going to be seeing people like me, aging baby boomers, who are no threat to you guys at all. I don't know how we could possibly be, but we're a majority of the people who use medical marijuana. I don't even like that name. I like cannabis better. That's the medical term. And um, So you have 30 seconds. Okay. I'm done, and I hope you allow it, and I am fully available for anybody who'd like any information about anything about cannabis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Who would like to go next, sir? And I am watching the clock. It's up there. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Eric Moyer. I would like to tell you a little bit about my family, our business, and the deep roots we've had in East Point since 1978. When I was six years old, my family and I moved into this community where my parents still reside today at 17450 Collinson. In 1983, my dad opened Ken South Park Service located at 22785 Gratiot. Uh, the blue and yellow building next to the big boy. Uh, at 12 years old, I started my first job working at the service station. In 2015, my father, Ken Moyer, became ill and was forced to step down from his daily management responsibilities. At this point, I decided to return to the family business. I realized that revenues were going down considerably and looked at changing our model. My plan was to buy vehicles at auction and start a used car lot at the station. I went to the planning department to inquire about changing the zoning and was denied due to the new master plan for East Point's downtown district. As suggestions were given from the city about what to do with the location, my entrepreneurial spirit led me to Ann Arbor where I found a Greenstone Provisioning Center in Ann Arbor's downtown district. I took a dilapidated historic building and turned it into something the city and its neighbors could be proud of. We fit the character of the neighborhood surrounded by civic buildings and boutique shops that line our streets. Looking at what was done in Ann Arbor and the suggestion given about my building here, I know we can bring this level of quality and care for the community of East Point. At Greenstone, we help Michigan medical marijuana patients manage the care of their seizures, arthritis, cancer, pain management, to mention a few. 
we have been operating for several years without any complaints from the community. As a result of this impeccable record on October 29th, we became one of less than 40 fully state licensed provisioning centers. As laws change and things progress in the state of Michigan, so should the plans for the city of East Point. My family and I have been rooted in this community for 40 years. We have been citizens and steadfast business owners and wish to continue this East Point heritage in this newly realized cannabis landscape. Also, anybody uh, would, that would be willing to come up, I'd be happy to give anybody a personal tour of my state license shop seconds. in Ann Arbor. You have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Please state your name. My name is Sandra McCormick. Um, and are you a resident of East Point? I am not a resident of East Point. I actually live in Lansing. I work in Lansing. I do um, lobbying there on behalf of numerous businesses that have been licensed, pre-qualified, various processes within the state um, who are operating in the current medical program and eventually um, as part of the qualifications in the recreation initiative that just passed, you have to have obtained a license to operate over there. So a lot of them are looking at that transition period. Um, so I passed out a packet of information to you guys prior to the meeting to all the council members, the black folder. And in there is a copy of an ordinance from Ann Arbor, um, which Mr. Moyer just talked about up here where they currently operate. Just an example for you. Um, there's a lot of ordinances that are already out there, a lot of things to consider as you move forward. That's pretty much what I do. Um, I help connect those dots to people in the department within, um, I know the mayor showed me the municipal leagues handout that they put together. Um, I helped them draft parts and pieces of that. I work with Jen pretty closely um, up there. So I just wanted to introduce myself, say hi, and wish you guys the best of luck on your decision. I hope you decide to opt in. It's a great business opportunity for your community. And it really honestly helps with illegal activity and a bunch of other things that are secondary effects that are happening because this is in our um, homes at this point in time. So. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Who would like to go next? My name's John Taylor. I reside over on Melrose Avenue. Um, I just wanted to come here today. Um, you know, I'm not a businessman. I'm not an activist, but I I am a person who who will use uh, uh, cannabis, and uh, I think it's important for everyone to realize that. If we, if East Point decided to opt out of something like this, um, we're not going to keep cannabis out of our community. Uh, people are still going to buy it. People are still going to grow it, and most importantly, our our police department, our police department is still going to have to police it. So I believe that uh, opting out is only going to put us at a disadvantage. Uh, I hear a lot of people talking about, you know, we need to keep this on the other side of Eight Mile. You know, comments like that, and. Uh, I, for one, don't want don't want to send my loved ones, you know, across Eight Mile, um, if they're gonna if they're gonna purchase this product. I think that the city can um, have respectable businesses that that do not bring down the value in the community at all. And um, I just think that that uh, I just think that our community should definitely consider opting in into this and and bringing those businesses in. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would like to go next? Please state your name and whether you're an East Point resident. Okay. Hi, Melissa Crook. I am an East Point resident. I've been a resident for nine years. And um, first, I want to thank you guys for having a public uh, hearing on this matter um, instead of just um, making a decision that doesn't necessarily fit what the residents want. Um, what I did is I went and looked for the results of the uh, Prop 1 and how East Point voted. Um, so 8,930 voters out of 13,423 voters passed Prop 1 medical marijuana. That means 66.53% of East Point voters cast their ballots to legalize marijuana. East Point had the largest percentage of voters to pass Prop 1 than any other municipality in Macomb County. That alone should tell you that the residents want to allow marijuana businesses in the city since it was part of the proposal language. Voting to ban any type of marijuana business would be against the wishes of residents and undemocratic. 
East Point has a great opportunity to lead the way for suburbs and the marijuana business since we currently do not allow zoning for any medical marijuana business. And I know that because I am a medical marijuana card holder because I have PTSD. By opting in, we will benefit from the tax revenue, which would help make improvements to the city. Perhaps we can get the community pool back that closed during the recession. Or build a splash pad so we can really become the family town we put out there that we are. We have vacant buildings and land that could be put to use to any of the five types of businesses. One such vacant land parcel that comes to mind is the land that Evergreen used to occupy before it became a grocery store, which then burned down. It has been since March 29, 2014 that the fire occurred and that land on 8 Mile at Redmond has stood vacant. This could be zoned for testing facilities, providing jobs and important data about the benefits and uses of marijuana. This land could be used for a growing uh, facility or a processing facility. I live in that neighborhood and I'm tired of driving past it every single day and seeing vacant land and remembering what used to be there. I used to shop at Evergreen when I first moved here. You have 30 seconds. Okay. Additionally, there are vacant properties on Kelly Road that could be dispensaries. There's also um, a old uh, medical building uh, that is now completely vacant that could be a processing facility, maybe a grow facility since you can grow. Uh, plants in your home, any building will do. You don't need a industrial building for that. Um, and this is tax revenue that will be beneficial for our city income, plus we'll also benefit from the 10% sales tax, your, which will go directly, okay, one, go directly to benefit our schools. And as a parent of a two and a half year old, in good conscience, when she starts kindergarten, the state of our schools, I could not send her to East Point schools, and I would really like to. Your time is up, thank you. Next. This is Wint. Yes, my name is Linda Wint, and I am a resident of East Point. I've been here 50 years plus. And I am the first one to say I opt out of marijuana. I love this city. It's been a sleepy town. It's been a family town. And I hate the thoughts of what marijuana would do to the city to bring it in here to be sold. My daughter lives in Colorado, need I say more. It has not been the best thing for Colorado. It has taken down a lot. You go down a freeway, you smell marijuana in the air. In her town, in her area, Douglas County, um, they have opted out of it. I would hope that you opt out of it for the sake of us older people who are here. Um, I love this city but I don't want to stay where it's, where it's going to be on every corner, every street where there's an empty building. There will be more of it. My family has been here. My husband's family's been here since the 30s. I would hate to have to say goodbye. That's all. Thank you, ma'am. In the back. I'm an East Point resident. I've been here 12 years now. In your name, sir? My name is Mark Lauks. Uh, I've used marijuana since I was 12 years old. I'm 61. I don't see nothing wrong with it. I think it's going to help us with our taxes in our city. And what the lady said about Colorado, Colorado, the, the people in Colorado, the taxpayers, get a check for 2300 a year for the last three years. So I don't see how that's a bad thing. So I think we should bring in, let them do, open their store. I've been into them. There's armed guards in the store, no matter where you go. There's nobody hanging around the outside of the store, so it's not going to cause an issue like that. So I say I vote for uh, having a dispensary here in East Point. It'll save a lot of hassle of people going to Detroit and riding the bus and causing problems that way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Creech. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council, Harvey Creek resident of, of East Point. These people have very, very valid, good ideas of, of, of why we should have medical marijuana or even recreation uh, marijuana. But I tell you, I figure this right now, we're having a tough enough time in this city 
right now policing our own city. We're lucky enough if we can even get a part-time or a full-time animal control. If you can tell me the same difference, our police department can handle this to the point of where, you know, they've already said, how do you know, they like said DUIL is one thing, but how do, there again too, proving people under the influence of marijuana. I have a brother that needs medical marijuana, which is great. I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with it, but I say as far as bringing it in here, if there's gonna be a police action to how many units they can have, where it's gonna be, and there again too, as I said, to totally enforce it, to the T, to the letter, and it's like, we have a tough enough time, as I said, really in with our code enforcement and, and the rest of the stuff. I, I, there, this is, to me is, is, is twofold. The people who need it, need it. But do we need this in our city? This is a question I'm asking. I don't want to see people go to eight mile road or past that and then bring it back because then you've got, you have our police department again too. What's coming in, what's going out, what's it gonna be? So when you think about it, just think about everything that goes down. And these people have very, very good, valid, you know, good reasons why we should have it. And as, to, as this young lady said right here, 66% of the residents and voters voted for it. So there's validity in everything that everybody is saying here tonight. I'm just going to say if we can police it and keep it under control and do what we need to do, then bring it. If we can't, please consider just opt out. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And next, over here, please. Hi, my name is Tanya Ballas. I'm not an East Point resident. I live right over the border in Warren, and Warren made the mistake of opting out. I am looking right now at commercial properties in East Point to buy to start a business if you guys opt in. I am also a nationally certified medical provider. I put myself through college from being a cannabis caregiver. I want you guys to think about that putting responsible business owners, people that are going to know the medical benefits of cannabis. Okay, I want you to think about the tax benefits that it's gonna do for your city. I want you to think about the opiate epidemic that is in Michigan and how this helps that. You do not have to put huge dispensaries that are gonna be bringing in a lot of traffic. You do not have to be bringing in huge grow operations that are unsafe. You can have micro businesses. Look more into that. That is something that's smaller storefronts. Look into having, like I said, responsible business owners I live right over the border. I care about this community. I was born and raised in Macomb County. My kids go to school in Macomb County. I live in, I work in Roseville, so I'm all in the area. I might not right, be right in East Point, but I care about this community, and that's the kind of business owners you need, not, you know, someone that's just in it for the profit. You know, look into people that care about the community and want to do good with this so please opt in don't be like warren don't miss out on the tax revenue for your streets and your schools and like this lady brought up splash pads and everything else it could it, it's good and i am hoping that i can buy a commercial property in your city and do well for you thank you thank you ma'am the next person mr kilgore Oh, good evening. I am an East Point resident. Um, I didn't come here today to talk about if I impose or endorse it. You know, the people voted on this, and I have to respect that, no matter what my opinion is. Um, what I'm concerned about is having too many storefronts. Look at all the party stores we have and how crappy they look with all their beer signs, alcohol signs. That's risk factors for our youth. I don't think we need that with marijuana everywhere like that. You know, I just asked the council to make an educated decision. You know, really read the proposal. I actually brought a copy of their proposal, but I won't go into all that because I only have three minutes. And, you know, we keep hearing about all this tax dollars, all this money, all this money, all this money. It only accounts for nine-tenths of 1% of Colorado's budget. People keep talking about Colorado, and they're misquoting. If you really want information out of Colorado, the Rocky Mountain Hyder Report has been collecting data since medical marijuana even was imposed in Colorado. There's pages and pages of data collection. Look at it. Make an educated decision. You know, 
I'm not here to try to, to sway you either way. I just know that I, I know almost everybody on council, and I know you will research this and make an educated decision. You know, and I keep hearing about all this money and money. What about how they kept increasing gas taxes to help fix the roads? That worked, didn't it? <laughs> you know, what about increasing the fees on our automotive registration? That was going to fix the roads, right? That worked. So how do we know where this money's going to go? If there's any left, if you read the proposal, the municipalities only get a percentage of what's left after administration fees are taken off. You know, Michigan State Police are going to have to do background checks. That's an extra added cost. Lara is going to have to hire people to do um, the licensing, come up with all you the You have one minute. You know, so we have to really think about this. How many businesses would we have to allow to really make a lot of money on taxes? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kilgore. Does anyone else wish to be heard? All right. Good evening. Um, my name is Jesse Jensen. I'm not. Oh, please talk directly into the microphone. They're a little bit weak. I apologize. I'm Jesse Jensen. I'm with Damascus Consulting and Development based out of Lake Orion. Um, we are a full service government affairs consulting firm. We assisted in the um, draft and uh, passage of the MMFLA and uh, local ordinances as well. So we're just offering our services to um, educate and um, provide any help. Thank you. Next, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is John Braddock, uh, business owner on Nine Mile, right off of Gratiot and East Point, uh, and I live here also. I, I would be, uh, I like the idea of, of, of marijuana being legal instead of, you know, being in the back alleys and stuff. So, uh, you know, I, I don't, I would like to know where people are using <laughs> marijuana and I would like to know where they are selling it. Uh, maybe to maybe kind of like having an area that that's maybe designated if you want to have a place where it's going to be sold in. It's just one particular area not all over the city and uh, maybe even a place for the young people who are 67 percent that voted for it if they want to go hang out in a neighborhood and smoke marijuana they let the building maybe be erected or some business come in and make a place for them to go hang out and, and just like they go to bars they could go hang out in marijuana that just be everywhere in the city and all over the community yeah. thank you thank you sir next Good evening. Again, my name is Chris Aiello. I'm an attorney in Warren, Michigan on Mound Road. Thank you for having me. Uh, since the last time I was here, I've had an opportunity to listen to everyone, and I dropped off three articles correlating uh, that, that there's no correlation between uh, legalized marijuana or medical marijuana and any increase in crime, especially associated with retail stores. So I thought those articles were pretty good and simple reading and quick, and, and they would help point you in the right direction. In addition, I also gave to you a current, uh, just one page uh, of the ordinance from uh, the city of Warren for their medical marijuana ordinance, uh, talking about signs as one of your constituents was concerned about signs in the party stores. That's how Warren deals with their sign issue and uh, advertising issue. And then also Lennox has uh, adopted uh, and handed out licenses already. And that's how they've handed out, or excuse me, that's how they've regulated signs and anything that goes in front of, in, inside of a uh, dispensary. <clears throat> So I stand by uh, if you need any other information or concerns, uh, I'll make myself available for you. I only request that uh, at this point you refer it to your planning commission, uh, um, see what they can do for you but to drop an overlay map and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an ordinance. And uh, Sandra McCormick from uh, Lansing, she did a great job and she really knows what she's talking about. I taught her everything that she knows. So. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
And you'll give a copy of your article to Mr. Yes, Altimus, please. Yes. Who would like to go next? In the back, sir? <coughs> Mr. Lameau, did you want to talk? I was thinking, right? Excuse me for walking funny. I had my leg operation, just learning how to walk again. No, I didn't use any drugs. Mike Lameau, City of East Point, 29 years. We're back to counting years again, Harv. Um, I'm listening to everybody talk, and I, and I think it's fantastic. I'm looking at the gentleman over there in blue, and he's the one we have to look at and protect. The fire department we have to look at and protect. Our schools we have to look at and protect. I'm for, I'm against marijuana, but if it's coming, it's coming, and I think what we should do I think what we should do, there's a lot of vacant buildings in this city. This bit about going into a storefront, baloney. A good building, I know the state has rules on how you can advertise mar medical marijuana or marijuana or cannabis. Um, I draw it, drive up and down 8 Mile Road, there were 62. 62 marijuana supply. I'm not sure what all they did, but they had to have the green cross. They had to have a green facade of some sort. And they were two miles apart. But there were 62 from Grand River to Kelly. They're not there anymore because of the new law. Hopefully the law will get changed. Hopefully things will get straightened out correctly. As I said, they're going to need help, our boys in blue. They have enough things coming out of Detroit. We just had by my house an altercation of some people, and they chased them down the street. I think they found some weapons or something on my property. But these guys are busy all the time, and there ain't enough of them, fellas, women of the council, put our police department back on staff. One minute. Give us, give us the staff. If we're going to have these places and there's taxes coming out of it, give our police and firemen money. As to roads, take the tax from gasoline that you pay, the sales tax, and put it into roads. That's $800,000 a year. Thank you, and good luck on everybody. And again, got a lot of vacant buildings. This storefront idea sucks. Thank you, sir. Who else? Uh, good evening. My name is Crystal. Um, I do not live in East Point. I actually live in Detroit. Um, I just wanted to piggyback off what a lot of the industry people said here tonight, specifically about um, in some of the concerns. The opportunity for the council to create ordinances that mandates the industry to work with the community is completely up to you. You can mandate that the industry works with the police to find out what needs to be done to prevent the crime that you're concerned of. You can work with the industry to find ways to detail, I'm sorry, to address deficit or other monetary issues that the city is facing. So I would just encourage the council to please opt in. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Sir? How you doing today? My name is uh, Lamar. I'm a uh, Please East state Point. your name directly into Lamar. My name. Uh, I'm an East Point resident. Um, I know it's a lot of concern with the police, um, but I was a police officer for 20 years. I was 17 years undercover. I'm currently a caregiver. Um, medical marijuana happens every day. It happens every day. It's people going driving around now with the same thing, smoking weed. If you didn't have it before, you don't have it now. It's not that much of a problem. I stopped leaning on it. I was undercover. I was at narcotics for 10 years. I stopped really harping on marijuana because it's, to me, it wasn't a serious drug to be keep arresting people for small amounts of marijuana. If you're going to bring it, I would say bring it um, with, with 
residents. I have nothing against people that's coming from the outside of the city. I have no problem. But if you're going to make the money, people, let, let the people from in the city make the money. If you have to come up with something where you might talk to four, five, six people that are residents and have them come up with something where you guys do the background check to make sure they're financially straight, they're whatever, you know, they don't, they don't have no records. You know, I understand the guy from Ann Arbor, I mean, Ann Arbor, it's a lot looser in Ann Arbor than it is every, everywhere else. Ann Arbor is Michigan, so they let everybody smoke. Um, so I have no problem with, you know, bringing it in. You know, you do it, do it the right way. And like I said, let, let the residents you have from seconds. the city, that's no problem. Let the residents from the city make the money if you're going to make it. Because, you know, if it's here, they're going to make sure that their neighborhood, just like I, I take care of my neighborhood. Um, I got a um, lawn care now where I take care of five or six elderly people on the block. Don't charge them anything. So that's the only thing I got to say is, you know, just let it be with the people of the city. Thank you, Lamar, and thank you for taking care of those residents. And next, this is amazing. Karen Moragin, East Point resident. Um, gosh, you know, I'm looking at the pros and cons, and I'm basically neutral on this. Um, you know, yes, okay, so now it's legalized in marijuana. But, you know, what still remains the same is federal law. So my heart goes out to all the police departments. I don't know what y'all are going to do. You know, on one hand, it's legal in Michigan, but it is still illegal under federal law. Um, when I was in law school, I um, had my, you know, experience in working with the prosecutor's office, and I also worked, um, you know, with cannabis counsel. So I've seen both sides. Um, the biggest problem is, is, you know, there's a lot of, oh, but look at all the revenue it's going to bring in. Okay, well, let's think about the banks. And one of the things that I do recall was a big problem was getting the banks to cash those checks because the banks are like, oh, no, we're not touching this because the banks are federally insured and they're going, no way. We don't want to be tied to this whatsoever. Okay, and not every business is going to be able to deal with cash only. In fact, that's a big, huge concern. If a business is dealing with cash only, it's not, it's not a criticism to the business. The concern is, is when you have all that cash on hand, that to me, invites trouble because you never want all kinds of cash laying around on hand you would have to constantly excuse me i'm speaking <laughs> when you have that much cash on hand you don't want to invite trouble you don't know if anyone is watching the building just as, you know, in your own home. <laughs> you don't want all kinds of expensive yeah, furniture and items on display. You don't want to risk having your house being broke into. I'll wrap up real quick. Um, the problem really is with those who abuse drugs, not the people who are being responsible. But again, the biggest concern is, is that if you're going to be a responsible parent, you're not going to have any drugs whatsoever in the house, whether it's prescribed, whether it's legal or illegal. You got a duty to protect those kids, and they can't be getting their hands on any kind of drugs, period. Thank you very much. You. I know there's a number of people. You, sir? Are you John? Yeah, hi, hi, Mayor. John Hoffman. Uh, John Hoffman, uh, longtime resident, Normandy. Hi there, Council. Um, so my concern would be the, the traffic that comes with a traditional dispensary, like what we see on Eight Mile. Um, we're a tiny city. I don't think that uh, I don't think that we could handle that 
maybe on maybe on a small stretch of, of Eight Mile, but definitely not on Gratiot or Kelly. However, I urge you to take a look at some of the, uh, the micro businesses, um, which do not bring that type of foot traffic or that in and out traffic. Um, same thing for testing facilities and uh, secure transport. Um, those could be extremely beneficial for us without bringing in a lot of foot traffic, which I know a lot of people are concerned about. Um, so I just hope that we, uh, we take a look at everything and uh, I, I hope that we vote yes or that you vote yes and opt in. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am. And please state your name and whether you're an East Point resident. Hello, my name is Sheila Braddock. I am an East Point resident. Uh, this is my husband, John Braddock, and I do vote no for it. Um, I am not a marijuana user, and I have, I have grandchildren, I have children. I'm concerned about them and what they see and what they'll be exposed to. I don't know where these places will be. I would like to think or hope that they would be no place near where children could be. I don't want the Dairy Queen here and here's a facility here to buy marijuana. Um, also the, the signage. I, I don't like driving up and down Eight Mile and all you see are those big green signs. I didn't know that it was required that they have those signs, uh, the certain colors or whatever, but I just, I just hate to see them. It's just so, so obvious, but I know um, marijuana is, is here. I smell it all the time in my neighborhood. I smell it when I go to shopping, whether I'm um, in, the, in the city of Detroit in East Point out on 23 Mile Road. I smell it on people, it, so I know that it's here. So whatever is decided, I would hope it would be regulated in a way so that um, our city wouldn't be over overrun with these type of businesses or and whatever is related to them. And we are a small city. We don't. We're just a small city, so I just don't want to see a lot of those businesses come in and take over and everything that goes with it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Over here. Hi again. My name is Lynn Slafia. I am an East Point resident. I would just like to say also that not only the benefits of businesses, expanding our business and getting more foot traffic into our city to spend money, not only for the marijuana, but for what goes along with that, restaurants, 7-Eleven, um, those types of things. But it's not just the um, smoking, tobacco type of marijuana that people use for the benefits. Um, it's also in food. In dispensaries, they don't just sell bud. They sell cookies and brownies and gummy bears. So it's not, there's not going to be a prevailing smell of marijuana smoke ho hovering over our city. That's not what's going to happen. I do think that this is a benefit for our city. There are so many different applications and ways to bring our city back to life. It has been, it seems like less businesses coming here. Opting in will revitalize our city, give our residents a, a, a way to help themselves medically without having to leave our area to go visit other cities that do opt in. I think that our best bet would be to opt in and benefit our residents. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I saw another hand over here. Hello, my name is Mike Pataki. I've lived in East Point for 10 years. I do not live in here anymore, um, unfortunately. I came down Gratiot today and saw all the lights, a new pavement that some people um, think is inadequate. However, I feel with the additional revenue from marijuana, and that's going to be your decision, what you do with it. Obviously, people are saying there needs to be enforcement. There needs to be regulations. All I hear in that is added jobs. 
Um, you're going to need people to do that. I'm sure that you're not going to want to take on these added responsibilities, so you will hire people to do this for you. Um, some of the things that I heard tonight were smell. I walked in this place, it smells like an ashtray. I don't smoke. I don't, I have nothing against you guys. <laughs> However, you know, I have asthma. I, I, I use marijuana for some reasons why I don't want to lay out on the line right now. Um, but I mean, there's certain things that we're going to have to have a give and take. And maybe when you're thinking about putting in micro businesses or, you know, whatever you do, make it a point to have adequate ventilation. So that way the whole neighborhood, you know, doesn't stink and different regulations and things like that. I, I feel that you're going to go forward with this. So, you know, it's up to you to deal with these kind of situations, adequate ventilation, um, driving under the influence. Is there a test for Xanax? I'm, I'm not too sure there is. And I've seen some people messed up on opioids and Xanax, antidepressants, way worse than alcohol and marijuana. I, I would be fine with, if somebody came up with it, do a swab or, you know, whatever to know if you're under the influence of the drugs. That's obviously a problem that many people brought up with. I'm fine. I hope that there's a solution for that so that we can police people. You know, nobody wants to get in accidents and things like that. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I see you're doing a good job here in East Point. I haven't been back here in five years. I think you're going to continue doing a good job, and I think some of these vacant buildings that some people are complaining about are opportune sites for micro businesses or um, testing facilities, things like that. It doesn't have to be, you know, 30, 30 seconds. Yeah, 3,000 square foot, you know, 300,000 square foot grow facilities, which I don't think that you guys are, are going to put on the books anyways. But I think some smaller things, testing facilities, maybe even delivery services and things like that. I think that you'll work it out and do the right thing. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Someone else over here? My name is Laura Wolgamuth. I'm an East Point resident of 11 years. Um, I am a marijuana user and I fully support allowing businesses in East Point. I think it will, uh, you know, give money back to the community through the taxes and things like that. And to my understanding, and I may be wrong, but, um, and I'm gonna check with a couple of the people that are advocates here today, but um, if we opt out, we get no money regardless. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, so if we opt out, our city gets nothing. And I really think our city should get something. If the whole state has agreed to it, like somebody said, we were the, um, in, in Macomb County, we had the highest percentage. And I mean, that may be because of numbers and things like that. But um, so many people voted for it in our city. I think our city supports it. And I think we should benefit from the taxes from it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Crystal Rucker, and I just wanted to briefly say that I, I don't think marijuana is a panacea for East Point, but I don't see any other re revenue streams. I don't know if there are, but I believe there is opportunity, and if it's done right, it could probably be a, a, a symbol for the rest of Macomb County. That's it. Thanks. Next. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Edna Kraftchik, and I am a resident of East Point. Well, I'm against it, but they've 66% said they're for it. Doesn't matter to me one way or the other. I don't really care. But I'd like to know what it's going to cost us as taxpayers in insurance, in the police. Already two years ago, I had my taxes raised $800 because I own two houses for a police department. I just want to know what it's going to cost me as a taxpayer to have marijuana in the city. Zero. No. Zero. No. Might even make money. Thank you, ma'am. 
please come forward next to John. My name is Shay and uh, I'm a resident of East Point. I work closely with a law firm and I just want to clarify, I hear a lot of people talking about marijuana bringing crime um, if we opt in. And I just want to clarify that regardless of whether we opt in or opt out, it's still legal for people to use marijuana in the city. So we're opting in to bring businesses and bring the economy in. Regardless, people will get marijuana where they get it and they will bring it in the city. Um, it will still be illegal to use in public. You can only use it on private property. So that doesn't change whether we opt in or opt out. And I just, people seem to think it will bring, bring crime into the city and regardless it will be used in the city whether we bring businesses in the city or not. Thank you. Thank you, Shay. Anyone else? Several people haven't spoken. Anyone else? Letters. Um, let's just read the one letter, not just the other one. This is a letter from Linda Flans. Dear City Council, I regretfully cannot make it to, today's, to Tuesday's City Council meeting. It is my understanding that input regarding marijuana regulations will be sought. I want to make it very clear that in no way, shape, or form do I support any dispensary growing operation or anything else related to distribution or manufacture of this drug. Whatever tax revenue comes from it will not be worth the damage to the city's image. It completely goes against the city's motto of a family town. We already have way too many liquor stores. As a resident of East Point for 20 plus years, I can say that I am completely saddened to see the direction that East Point is going in. There are security doors popping up on homes left and right. The LED lighting in businesses' windows makes me feel like I'm driving through a red light district. Add marijuana dispensaries and it will certainly not feel like a family town. Nothing says this is a high crime area like security doors on homes, fencing around parking lots, obnoxious lighting in businesses' windows, and a plethora of liquor stores and now marijuana dispensaries. There will very soon not be much distinguishing East Point from Detroit. I drive Gratiot to downtown regularly, and I can tell you that East Point really is looking a lot more like Detroit than the family town I moved into. So if this is something you think would be great, a great thing for the city, I can only suggest that you also look at changing the motto of the city with it. Security doors, red light districts, and marijuana shops do not belong in a family town. Perhaps a better motto would be a party town. No family I know of would look to move into or stay in a community that has these. Sincerely, Linda Flans. All right, and no one else would like to be heard at this time. The, no one else? Well, we're going to move on to the rest of our meeting. And as I previously mentioned, we will be back next week on Tuesday. We have an audit presentation first, and then we'll go on to further discussion of the, of the marijuana opting in or opting out. Anyone else want to give an opinion? All right. So you're welcome to stay to hear the rest of the meeting, but you're also welcome to leave if you would like. <laughs> Staying. Let's see. <laughs> Where's everyone going? <laughs> There's a few of us that have to stay. Well, there's some very interesting stuff on our agenda. <laughs> a Metro Act permit. You don't want to hear about our MERS resolutions? No. I didn't say I mean, they're not that's here true. for all this good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's coming up. That'll be in like a minute because yeah, it's coming right up. That ordinance is going to go. I think that's what's forming. Where? Is that Frank? Mayor? I was staring at him and I couldn't figure it out. Yeah, I think you're right. It is. What do you uh, want? Need a second. We're going to be done. We do need to continue on this meeting, so if you're going to leave, gavel it so that they can. We do have to continue on with our meeting. Perhaps we can close the hall doors. Mr. Altimus, could you please uh, close the doors to the uh, chamber so we can continue? Mr. Acavetti, we want to thank you for coming as a former mayor. We'll have to see if we can get your picture up there. Yeah. I'd love to have my picture back on the wall someplace. I thought they were all in the men's room.
<laughs> we may put yours there. <laughs> yeah, Madam Mayor, we had three three mayors in here all at once, eh? <laughs> three mayors, three former mayors, really. <laughs> oh, I was counting you. Wait, am I missing someone? Was it four? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to unfinished business. And our, our item tonight is the first item is a second reading and the adoption of ordinance number 40, which is an ordinance to amend chapter 10, buildings and building regulations, article three, rental housing, manner of registering rental housing. Uh, Are we Mayor, if we, if we can, could just wait a second for uh, Councilwoman Owens, just needed a, needed a second. She'll, okay, she's already back. So I guess if we can literally wait a second, <laughs> we'll be all set. Were there oh. any questions on this item? No, Madam Mayor, I'd be happy to uh, make a motion if Please. there were no questions. Uh, I'll, I'll motion to uh, that the uh, East Point City Council received a recommendation from the city manager to amend the code of ordinances regarding the manner of registering rental housing. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the East Point City Council adopt an ordinance to amend Chapter 10, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 3, Rental Housing of the Ordinances of the City of East Point. Support. Any questions? Anything else? Mm -mm. No. You're laughing just because we increased it from 25 to 50 miles? Oh, no, just Monique and I competing for the <laughs> support. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. All right. And the item B is um, unfinished, under, under unfinished business is the discussion on the petting zoos. And Mr. Kleinfeld, I believe that was yours. Uh, yeah, I know we discussed it last time and uh, we've gotten more information. I actually don't know if we need to discuss it more tonight. It sounds like Karen has more information she plans to send us. And given that it's winter, I don't think this is a pressing issue because there won't be any petting zoos. So would winter. you like to um, put it on the agenda for the following week? Uh, whatever we council it. wants to do. You want to table it till January maybe? That's what I was going to recommend if there was any way we could just table it until January. If you make a motion. Well, I would like to add something to the discussion, if I may. Okay. Um, well, I talked to um, Director Rohit, and me and him uh, had a conversation about the petting zoos. We did um, a huge amount of research, and um, I think he did um, some research on the petting zoo that was used in the Harvest Fest, and we came up with some, some ways to, you know, monitor it by using an animal, animal control person. Every, we only did two this year, right? You said. So, I mean, that's not a lot but he was talking about having the animal control there present to see what's going on. And then also look into some training about petting zoos for the animal control person as well to help with that. So that's just some, you know, ideas and things like that. So, um, I think that'd be a good idea, but um, if we table this until January, then we have a little bit firmer foot about what kind of training and the cost of the training as well. Sure. Well, so did anyone want to just, I mean, I guess I, I'm all right with just banning them in the city, but if additional regulations are preferred by everyone else, that's fine. And then I guess I'd like to, I, Madam Mayor, I would, I would like to make a motion to table this only because I know that we were, we did receive a lot of information, yeah. but this past week I've been very busy and I really, to be honest, have not had a chance to review all of the petting zoo information that I have rece received. Okay. So before going, going forward with this discussion, I would like to table. I'd, I'd like to do second meeting of January. Well, whatever one has a shorter agenda. <laughs> so right now it's the, okay, second one. Okay. Second meeting of January. So can we get a motion to table? Madam Mayor, I motion to table the discussion on petting zoos to the second meeting of January. Do we have support? Support. Please call the roll. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Move on to reports from administration and we'll start with our city manager, Mr. Sabota. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Honorable Council Members. Uh, as you recall, one of my commitments upon being hired was to uh, present uh, regular financial reports. Uh, 
my goal is to have the financial reports within 10 days uh, at the end of each month. I have not been able to meet that as of yet. Uh, however, uh, this past weekend I was able to provide uh, financial reports, uh, spe uh, specifically the comparative balance sheets for the periods ended July 31st, 2018, August 31st, 2018, and September 30th, 2018, as well as a cash by fund report for the same period in September, cash by bank report for the same period in September, and the revenue and expenditure detail report uh, for the period ended September 30th, 2018. In the future, uh, the uh, monthly reports uh, for revenue and expenditure detail, uh, revenue and expenditure uh, that are not quarterly will be uh, summarized in the manner that the budget is adopted, so you can actually compare it to how the budget is adopted. The details just to give you a flavor of how things are going, however, we do not adopt a line item budget here in the city of East Point. I also provided a copy uh, to you of the investment report from Robinson Investors. Uh, they uh, uh, invest some of our surplus cash that we have. Uh, I did provide a very small commentary uh, with the reports. Uh, the format that was presented to you will not be a format going forward. Once we get caught up, you'll see a more formal developed format. Uh, Mr. Blum will be writing more of a commentary on that than I will, but I at least wanted to get something out there because with the audit presentation coming up uh, next week, you should at least have an idea where we're standing almost five months through the end of the uh, current fiscal year. Uh, and I promise to place these reports on the city's website. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get those up this week, but my goal is definitely by ne next week the public will be able to review the balance sheets, uh, cash by fund, cash by bank, revenue and expenditure report, and investment reports. And for the month of November, you also have a tax settlement report, so you know how property taxes are. Uh, future years, I'll be able to do a comparison report, but because I wasn't here a year ago on November 30th, I couldn't run the report at that time, and... You actually need to run a report on a particular day to get the information as of that day. So financial reports are coming uh, to the website. Uh, personnel changes uh, for members of council and for the public effective this past Monday, I have assigned Mr. Marucci in the city manager's office uh, to be responsible for the supervision of parks and all parks associated contractors. Therefore, if anyone has any complaints or concerns regarding parks, uh, those complaints or concerns should be addressed to the city manager's office and to Mr. Marucci. Uh, however, if you'd like to say something nice about the parks, we're glad to hear compliments as well. Um, also, after the last meeting, I, under, uh, I understand and believe that council is committed to making the property tax reversion program successful. Uh, so what I have done is I have uh, directed our building director, Mary Van Haren, to take an active leadership role in the disposal process of tax reverted properties. Also, earlier today, before the council meeting, I met with the St. Clair Shores City Manager, Michael Smith, uh, and uh, their program has been identified as a model that we should try and emulate here in East Point. So I obtained a lot of valuable information. Uh, there's definitely differences between the two communities and the way that we're doing things here. So uh, I'll try to summarize uh, my discussion and advise council and director Van Haren as to what we need to be looking for if we're looking to emulate the city of St. Clair Shores. Uh, we have uh, been notified unofficially because the official press notice has not been made and it will not be made until February, but the city of East Point uh, will be awarded from the Michigan Concrete Association uh, an award of excellence in the collector's category for the work that we did on Topher Road pavement reconstruction between Boulder and David. So uh, we will be uh, presented a plaque uh, that will be in February. So, uh, collector's award, what does that mean? Uh, I believe a collector is a type of a street designation. So, oh, okay. So it's yeah. a collector road. Okay. <laughs> so we, <laughs> for the concrete we laid on a collector road, we received a collector award. I didn't know if we had a pile of concrete somewhere <laughs> yeah. that we were collecting. And uh, there are over 50 projects submitted. So we apparently did something good. So uh, anyone who, who's concerned about the work that we do, uh, well, this just demonstrates that we do good work. I'm not going to talk about the work that the state does on Gratiot, which we had an editorial comment on earlier in the meeting. 
On a sad note, uh, the city does extend its condolences to the father of uh, patrolman Steve Sellers, who died this uh, weekend. The uh, funeral was yesterday. I was able to attend the wake, and I believe the director was able to attend the funeral. Keeping along the lines of public safety, on, on November 19th and November 30th, for the first time in several years, the East Point Police Department conducted liquor control inspections on all liquor establishments within the city. Uh, we inspected a total of 44 establishments, and unfortunately, 18 furnished uh, alcohol to a minor. All establishments were cited, uh, and uh, we're hoping that uh, the businesses have learned their lessons, and we're not going to forget about them again. I know it's been a long time since we were out there, so maybe they were a little bit lax, but they need to know and the public needs to know. Uh, here in East Point, we are concerned about not selling alcohol to minors. Uh, good news, and the public's probably wondering what the reason is. We've had all these closed sessions for collective bargaining and then having motions made at the very end when everyone has left, but we have uh, six unions here in the city of East Point, and I'm going to say five and a half essentially uh, agreed to changes to our employee health insurance, which is expected to save the taxpayers about $8 uh, million dollars uh, over the course of uh, the future in terms of our OPEB liability. So you're going to see a significant reduction in our OPEB liability, not on this financial statement that will be presented uh, next week, but on next year's statement. Uh, we still have quite a ways to go, but uh, we thank the uh, employees for their uh, willingness to uh, uh, do the right thing for both themselves and for the taxpayers. Uh, we also uh, had the civil service meeting yesterday, and the civil service approved an eligibility list for firefighters, and I signed three uh, offers of employment. Uh, so hopefully we will have a full fire department, and technically we're hiring one two weeks early before one of our current firefighters uh, uh, retires, so we're getting a little bit proactive ahead of ourselves. Uh, we also conducted an interview today uh, after civil service certified the list for the deputy finance director treasurer position. We actually uh, interviewed three very qualified individuals, and I believe Mr. Blum and I have come to a decision, and hopefully we'll be able to communicate that uh, within the next couple of days. So stay tuned for news on that front. And that will definitely help uh, Mr. Blum in terms of the administration of his office, take a lot of things off his plate, and uh, it, it spreads the responsibility around, and that's greatly needed. Uh, going back to streets, since we did a good job on concrete, well, I guess we uh, need to continue that. Uh, the city did submit uh, some proposals to the Macomb uh, County TIP program, and that's the program where the uh, county provides money received through the federal government uh, to the city uh, to help uh, improve streets. And we had one project approved in each of the next three years in the TIP, 2021, Topher between David and Kelly, 2022, nine mile from the West City limits to Gratiot, and 2023, nine mile from Gratiot to Tuscany. So businesses and residents along those stretches, uh, be advised, headaches will be coming uh, for a short period of time, and then we'll have some nice roads to be driving along. Uh, the plan, at least for the 2021 project, is that we are going to uh, need engineering, preliminary engineering allocated for July 2020 with construction uh, planned for the spring of 2021. Uh, we're thinking that all these projects will span fiscal years, so it's probably a summer project most likely. Uh, resident concerns. Uh, I do want to apologize. We had a situation where I received a call from a resident uh, who had made a complaint about a tree and looked online and in our system it was noted that the uh, case had been resolved and in reality it wasn't. We took care of that within a couple of days. Uh, found a little flaw in the way that we're recording uh, some of the uh, complaints. So uh, identified it. Uh, hopefully we'll have a fix to that and we'll be able to have a better tracking. So once again, I do apologize uh, for uh, uh, that slight oversight. I also had the ability to uh, uh, meet with uh, Mr. Creech earlier this week and go over some of the concerns that he has expressed. Uh, so uh, he called, made an appointment, and I was able to discuss those, and I hopefully provided enough information for him. Uh, as I had indicated uh, earlier this afternoon, I met with St. Clair Shore City Manager Mike Smith this is the first time that I have been able to actually get outside of the community to conduct a meeting. Uh, and uh, actually, that 
will probably be continuing at least for a while. Uh, it's important to know how the people outside of the community sort of view us and what they can offer to us as, uh, as well and what we could potentially offer to them in terms of uh, sharing resources. Uh, in terms of board and commission meetings, uh, I apologize for the uh, uh, notice that we had an Arts and Cultural Commission meeting on Monday the 3rd. Uh, I should have asked why I didn't have an agenda. It's because the meeting was actually December the 10th. So it will be next, uh, this coming Monday. The Planning Commission will meet this Thursday on December the 6th, and on their agenda, they will be asked to pass a resolution recommending that the master plan be adopted by the City Council. So we can finally, hopefully, put that to bed uh, in December. So come January, we could begin discussing and reviewing an implementation strategy and determining what types of uh, budget allocations will be required to implement the master plan. Quick question, Mr. Sabota. Uh, then they discussed Kelly after our joint meeting. We just, I think that was pretty much just one item. I guess maybe Ms. Lucido. And that has actually been incorporated into the document. So okay. whatever input was uh, requested that has been made and that's right. why there was no uh, follow-up meeting. Okay. Uh, apparently we had a little bit of miscommunication along the lines. So too many people, too many cooks in the kitchen and we got it settled. Uh, the Board of Review will be meeting on Tuesday, December the 11th. This is a state mandated meeting of the Board of Review to correct errors and omissions and uh, PREs, Principal Resident Exemptions. The Parks Commission will meet Wednesday, December the 12th. Uh, all of these agendas have yet to be created. And I have confirmed that PACE will definitely meet this uh, month on Tuesday, December 18th at 11 a.m. Uh, City Council, and this is important for the public. There will be a special City Council meeting next week Tuesday, December 11th at 6 o'clock p.m. The purpose of this meeting is to review the audit of the Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. If the public wants to know and understand what the city's financial position was as of June 30th, 2018, you should come to this meeting, watch it on TV. Uh, I hope we will be able to have the document uploaded to the city's website in advance. I'm getting a nod from Mr. Blum, yes. Uh, so we'll even put it on the front page. But if you really want to know and understand what type of financial position the city is in, uh, then you need to attend this meeting. Uh, there will be a relatively uh, lengthy presentation, uh, similar to last year's format for the city council as requested. Uh, it's PowerPoint, it's going to be pretty. There's a lot of colors in there. Some green, a little bit of red, in some cases a lot of red, depending on what we're talking about. Uh, and hopefully uh, it, it will be in a manner that everyone can understand because these documents are definitely difficult for non-finance people to uh, review and especially if you're not a government person because our type of accounting is a little bit different from the private sector. Uh, so I encourage the public to attend because this is very important. These are your tax dollars and how, how, how the city council is spending them. A uh, couple of other announcements. The following Tuesday, December 18th, we will have a public hearing on the reprogramming of approximately $106,000 of community development block grants. This is a public hearing that's required by the federal government. And uh, we are uh, in recommending uh, and suggesting that improvements be made to Roxana Park. So if public would like to express uh, their opinion on the use of these funds, please uh, come to the uh, meeting uh, that we will have on Tuesday the 18th. So that will be a hearing on the agenda. A uh, couple other reminders. Yard waste, the final week for yard waste collection is the week of December 10th, the 10th through the 14th. So uh, hopefully the leaves have fallen now. You'll have a chance to rake them before it snows. Uh, put them where they need to be placed for collection the week of December 10th through the 14th in your uh, normal days. And there for some reason was some sort of a uh, misunderstanding, but we do not have a delay in our garbage uh, uh, collection and our waste pickup. Uh, please be sure that your cans are out at the curb facing the correct direction no later than 7 a.m. the morning of your scheduled day. Um, if it is not there by 7 o'clock and the truck comes by, they will not be coming back. And the reason I say that is they have been and their drivers got in trouble. Uh, because it's incurring overtime. So uh, 
they, they're trying to do their job, but everyone needs to help uh, with that. Uh, finally, uh, the big event is tomorrow, Wednesday, December 5th, here at 7 o'clock at City Hall. It is the annual East Point Tree Lighting. Uh, we will have crafts for kids, hot cider and donuts provided by the East Point Lions Club, sing-along, s'mores making, a visit from a certain resident and his spouse from the North Pole, uh, characters by Epic Entertainment, and uh, the lights will come on at some point, uh, so bring your camera. This is a fun family event for our family city. Uh, I would like to thank, at this time, uh, those people who are making this event possible, uh, Rare and Mr. Tony Lipinski for being the main organizers, uh, to J.J. Mish uh, and the Parks Maintenance Division for the setup of all the decorations, uh, Pastor Albert Rush of Emmanuel United Methodist Church, who will be uh, providing the invocation, the Epic Entertainment Team, uh, the East Point Fire Department, who I believe will be providing uh, a, a, an assist with transportation as we don't have snow on the ground that would accommodate a sleigh. Uh, the East Point Police Department will be keeping us safe. The East Point High School Choir and Band will be uh, leading some of the singing, and the East Point Lions Club will be providing refreshments. And the reason that I am expressing my thanks today is, uh, unfortunately, I will be unable to attend the tree lighting uh, because we cannot have uh, one person in two places at the same time. And this Wednesday is actually the State of the County Address that will be delivered by our county executive. And because all of the elected officials will be at the tree lighting, uh, I've been invited uh, and asked to represent the city of East Point at that particular event. And I know it's been a while since we've been there because we always seem to have a conflict. So uh, I will do my best to represent the city proudly. Also uh, take the opportunity to do some networking once again outside of the community. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I can't be here for the tree lighting. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, coordinate schedules next year so uh, all council members can be at the uh, uh, state of the county and all council members can be at the tree lighting. And that essentially concludes my report this evening unless council members have any questions. I do have one. <clears throat> um, I know the master plan's taken some time. Uh, have have you talked to Tony Lipinski at all about um, aligning a parks, either a separate master plan or, or how that works with grants? Right. In order for either Rare or the city, either city, to apply for a grant from the state of Michigan, DEQ, DNR, I can't remember which department, both of them, both of them uh, we need to have a, a master plan for parks. Uh, I do believe that uh, Rare is either working on or just had one, and I have to check to see what the status is of our master plan, and Roseville, well, that's up to them to, the, to do theirs. But I am aware of that requirement. Uh, I know that there are some ideas for some improvements to our parks, and that is a component and a required component. Uh, the park component is not in our main master plan, uh, but most communities do have a separate master plan for parks and recreation, and I will do a follow-up on that. But I believe at the present time we're either on track or we are in compliance. There's a, there's a recre Rare's got a recreational master plan. They do. Them. Yeah. Yeah. And they, we did help them with it. But I think we've made a lot of changes to it since then. Oh, okay. But um, at every single conference I've ever been to where we're talking about the application of the grants, it says very clearly, and I asked Mr. Sabota to check on the law related to that, that any information related to parks has to be included in your master plan besides the parks and rec master plan. Oh, we can't just make a reference to a separate document? Seems like that. There's, there's a question out there. Um, I haven't. In my previous uh, communities, we always had separate rec plans and master plans, and usually it's the rec plan that's done on time and the master plan that's not. And the DEQ and the DNR are very specific. You must, must, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, you must update that rec plan every five so, years. So the, the problem is that the last time we did a master plan, we didn't have rare. So we had our separate parks and rec plan that was included in the, the master plan. But this master plan has taken us forever to get on. I have a little bit of concern. Document, though. It says October 2014 on our most recent uh, recreation master plan. So we're, we're good until October of 2019, right, which, which means very soon. exactly. 
I have but, one question, but does, but the, re does the recreation plan include actual details for our parks, or is it just the recreation? Yeah, the, the name of it is Community Park Recreation Open Space and Greenway Plan. Okay. Is that ours or is that rare's? It's rare's, I mean. But rare does not, rare only includes recreation, and it does mention where the parks are, but it doesn't talk about improvements to parks. And that's what I'm wondering, if, if our Parks Commission should do a separate parks recreation plan for just the city of East Point. Uh, properly, it would be done by the Planning Commission uh, because they're the master planners for the city. But there, it's not to say that the Parks Commission can't work with, work with them, the planning commission. assuming we can. And I think that was our goal in establishing the parks. It just took right. us a longer time to get it off. Yes. But I really think that we need to somehow, and I know Jeff is going, oh, my God, <laughs> but... So if we can get the, the master plan finished, then maybe the planning commission can go forward with that um, as soon as we get the master plan finished. We did have um, a joint meeting between planning commission and the city council, and I think there were a lot of suggestions, but we haven't seen the finished master plan. So I'm hoping you're going to finish it on at the planning commission and then refer it back, or are we going to have a joint meeting? Or it's going to be it's a referral for approval, so it'll be the fi that's the final draft. So then whatever suggestions we had if they're not included then then council can send I, it right back to the planning commission i've listened to the planning commission meeting and i haven't heard substance of what was going in and what was going out so i'm not sure whether a lot of the changes that was recommended got into it we yeah definitely changed some because we we read the zoning on kelly and there was zoning were, on kelly there yeah. were some things that haven't changed i thought we, we were generally happy with everything except Kelly, we just asked him at that last joint meeting, and it sounds my like main, was yeah. My main reason for asking was because after I had spoken to Tony about grants, I wasn't sure if it needed to be in our master plan. Perhaps, Mr. Sabota, you could just reach out to communities you know that have it separate and see if they've been denied funding or if it's been fine. Okay. Can you talk to <coughs> Sterling Heights because they've done quite a bit over there? I have several contacts in the planning area. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking of local communities that I know just got grants. Um, I'm, Roseville just got two grants. And Roseville's grants didn't come in, were not included in our rare plan. It would have come under their... Uh, if they applied, it has to be their Parks and Rec plan. Their Parks and Rec plan, and so I'm wondering if it's a separate plan or was it included in their master plan? I can look into that. Okay, anything else for Mr. Savota? No? All right, Mr. Blum, let's move on to you. Yes, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, the um, audit is anticipated that we will have the PDF on Friday. It will be sent out as soon as it's received. The hard copy will most likely be delivered Tuesday night at the meeting. Um, as always, the uh, questions continue. And even yesterday and today, I was providing them hopefully the final answers. Um, but there's always some nitpicky stuff that somebody in their, uh, I guess, testing department, for lack of a better term, um, wants more information on. But um, it, it's normal. It usually takes a good month of follow-up questions to wrap everything up. Um, as mentioned, we did the interviews for the uh, deputy position. and. Uh, I am anxiously awaiting <laughs> the, uh, the offer and hopeful acceptance for uh, one of the candidates. Uh, it's overdue. Um, and so I'm, I'm very happy with the, uh, the possibility of any of the three coming in. So, um, and that's really about it. So, Any questions? Move on to our city attorney. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, members of council. As the council is aware, earlier this year, um, uh, by ordinance, the uh, council created the Arts and Cultural Diversity uh, Commission. After that uh, commission was created, a question came up about the commission uh, accepting donations that would be tax deductible. The way the ordinance is currently drafted, they would not be able to do that for tax deductible purposes, but uh, MCL 117.40 allows for the creation of a nonprofit corporation by a city through either ordinance or through uh, resolution. Um, I've been doing some research, and I think that uh, 
this is something that can be accomplished uh, by the city uh, through the creation of uh, such a nonprofit uh, corporation, by the creation of articles of incorporation and all of that. What I intend on doing is preparing a draft of those documents and circulating them to uh, city administration for input uh, with the uh, anticipation that ultimately that will be an agenda item in the near future for Council's consideration. And uh, Council's also in uh, receipt of our monthly status report for the month of December. I'm happy to answer any questions that the uh, Council may have. I've got one somewhat specific question about the nonprofit. Can oh. other boards or commissions, or can it, is it going to only specifically be for? The intent would be that it would be broad enough to allow for not just the Arts and Cultural Diversity Commission, but for other uh, components of the city as well. All right, just get my gears turning. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to new business, unless there's other questions for Mr. Albright. No? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did you have one? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our first item under new business is the Metro Act um, permit application, um, and this is Extra Net Systems Incorporated. Um, I did have a question on this, Mr. Altimus. I that would be Mr. Sabota. That would be me. Yes, I worked on this. Um, I have a question because, as I understand it, they're going to be installing fiber optic cable and special um, battery backups on utility poles, street lights, et cetera. But doesn't Detroit Edison own all of our street lights and poles? They will need to get permission from the property owner, but they cannot get permission from the property owner if they do not have a Metro Act permit to do the work in the city. Okay. And there is a colored map, albeit not the best quality. I, I saw that. But, uh, oh. There's some underground and some overhead. Uh, and when they're doing underground work, they will need to work with our uh, public works department and our building department. How about uh, engineering? Uh, if engineering needs to be involved, they obviously will be involved as well. Is anything underground, I think, that if you don't have engineering involved? We've been down that road so many times and recently with um, the one and only. All right, I will entertain a motion, please. Madam Mayor, I motion to approve the Metro Act application by Extechnet Systems, INC, and authorize the city manager to execute the agreement. Support. We will support it. Did you have more discussion, Mr. DeMarco? Uh, nope. All right, please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Our second item is resolution number 40, adoption of the Municipal Employees Retirement System Defined Contribution Plan. Can we have a motion to that effect, please. Madam Mayor, I'll motion to adopt the resolution which adopts uh, the Municipal Employees Retirement System Defined Contribution Plan and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to the MERS Defined Contribution Plan. Support. We support. So, Mr. Sabota, is this a new plan? Uh, in some cases it is, and in some cases it's a transfer of the existing assets. Just updating the, the N MERS plan that not, we have in place? No, no. It's a, it's a transfer of our existing DC plan that's resident with the ICMA Retirement Corporation, moving okay. those assets over to MERS, and then there's also the plan right. that we negotiated during my uh, contract as well. All right, thank you. So are you saying um, the people that were hired before wasn't under this, um, they already under this, or? No, the, I'm gonna call them the old employees mm -hmm. are in a defined benefit plan, and that was the old city pension plan, which was moved to MERS a couple of years ago. Okay. These are the people who were placed into a defined contribution plan, the newer employees, and those funds have been resident at the ICMA, and now they will all be transferred to MERS. Everybody's gonna be in the same thing. So everyone for the pension plan will be in MERS. Okay. Well, Councilwoman Owens, were you asking to, you're making sure n nobody's like been left out, right, is maybe what Yeah, I want to know what the people who, yeah. where they were before mm -hmm. and, yeah. And that's correct then, of course. I'm, I'm right? really yeah. glad that we so finally moved yeah. them out of the ICMA. So then essentially, yeah, in our uh, check, checks here, instead of paying ICMA, we'll be paying MERS now. At 
the appropriate at, time. At, well, right. Exactly. Yeah. And I do believe, uh, after having researched this for the past couple of years, that the uh, uh, employees will be very grateful because the fees charged by MERS are significantly less than the ICMA. Right. And uh, hopefully they'll see that in uh, return on investment as well. I, okay. I fought that tooth and nail. All right, so we have a motion in support. Please call the roll. Councilmember Domenico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Item C is the resolution number 40, adoption of the Municipal Employees Retirement System Uniform 457 Supplement Retirement. Can we have a motion? Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion to adopt the resolution which adopts the Municipal Employees Retirement System Uniform 457 Supplemental Retirement and authorize the City Manager to execute all necessary documents related to the MERS defined contribution plan. Support. Move and support. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico. I have something oh. to say. Got a um, question. Oh, did you have more questions on this? Yeah, this is another one that I have questions on. Um, now, with the supplemental retirement, now, what are we, what, what's the addition to this? Okay, the uh, 457 plan is a completely an employee option in 2019 to uh, div divert up to $19,000 of an employee's earnings to put away for uh, future uh, use by that employee when they reach a certain age. Uh, there's different ages, and uh, uh, this is a way that an employee can uh, reduce their current tax uh, bracket and also to put money away for a supplement to a pension plan. So under uh, IRS regulations right now, a person can uh, have up, in 2019, have up to $19,000 set aside in a 457, and up to $55,000, I believe it's voluntary contribution, into a defined contribution plan. Uh, this was the plan that I had requested uh, during my negotiations as I was not satisfied with ICMA. Uh, so we will be opening up a 457 plan with MERS. And I don't recall, Mr. Blum, if we're going to be allowing the uh, other city employees to take advantage of this and transfer their funds as well as that yes. in the future. No, that, um, w one of the reasons that the current employees aren't moving immediately is uh, Almost two years ago now, we signed an agreement with ICMA that we would not move anybody for two years in exchange for a lower rate. Um, two years ago, we couldn't move people because the contract specified brand name ICMA within their contracts. That gave us a two-year window to get rid of the brand name so we could move it wherever we needed to. Um, that two years expires in February. So in March we will is when we will move the active employees and they will be able to take advantage of the MERS, um, build both defined contribution, which the city puts in, and the 457 that the employee can put in, um, and they'll be able to move, put it in the MERS and then save on the uh, expenses, investment expenses. So it's two accounts then. It's one that the um, yep. city covers and it's their own money in another yep. account. And they currently have that with ICMA. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just it'll, it'll be with MERS instead of ICMA. So in March we'll just have the same resolution essentially? Again, no, nope. no, this one this resolution covers. actually covers all plans good. within that type. So that's why you have one for defined contribution, one for 457, and an upcoming one for the health, retirement health savings. Each MERS resolution covers any plan under that resolution. Okay. So it's three different ones, Sam. Okay. Maybe I'll yep. into there. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and support. Please call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Item D, resolution number 40, again, adoption of the Municipal um, Employees Retirement System Health Care Savings Program. Sure, Madam Mayor, I'll motion to adopt this resolution which adopts the Municipal Employees Retirement System Health Care Savings Program and authorize the city manager to execute all necessary documents related to the MERS health care savings program. Support. Move and support. If there's no further questions, the you're okay HSAs, with this? Right? Yeah. HSA. Uh, no, yeah. this is not an HSA. No. Okay. Uh, this is actually, uh, as you know, we no longer offer um, OPEB, post-retirement health insurance, to newer employees. Uh, there is a contribution that the city makes that's distributed to a fund, I believe it's with ICMA, correct? correct? 
and we will be moving these now to MERS as well. Uh, also, I had uh, requested starting in January if I chose to opt out of health insurance, which I did, uh, that my money, rather than being paid to me in cash, uh, be deposited into this particular account. And this money is available to an employee once they separate from the city, uh, whereas at any age, whereas a 457, uh, if you want a penalty-free withdrawal, you have to be a certain age, and a DC plan, same situation, penalty-free withdrawal after a certain age. So this is more so for uh, health insurance costs upon separation from city, either by resignation, retirement, uh, or other reason. So in addition to HSA? Uh, this is, this, no. You, no. Or you have one or the other. No, uh, this is, you cannot use this money for uh, current health care expenses. Uh, an HSA can only be used for current health care expenses. This is, a, this is another benefit provided to the employee. Now, if they retired and had money in this particular account, then they could use that for health insurance-related expenses should they not have enough in their HSA. But both an HSA and this health care savings program is a way to uh, provide money to an employee tax-free FICA-free to both the employee and the city uh, that will be invested even more so in this plan than in an HSA at a higher rate of return uh, that will in turn provide an adequate or somewhat adequate source of uh, income or revenue to pay for health insurance expenses in the future. Okay. Well, I guess maybe that was the question I was trying. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was kind of because I thought this was the HSA. You're talking about a whole different plan now. Yes, an it's HSA is really a bank account, and council action was not – Specific council action was not required. The only action that the city authorized was the approval of the tentative agreements. And that actually was set up uh, December 1st. Mr. Bump, did you have anything to add on that? Or? No, I, I was, the only thing I would have said, HSA is for current employees. This health retirement is for when they're not here anymore. That's, that's really the only difference. They're controlled by different IRS regulations. Why are the um, contributions um, different percentages? Union contracts. Okay. I guess I, I was just asking if they're just, it's all health care stuff, though. I guess. All health care. Yep. I guess my, really just my question. <laughs> but, but thank you, Mr. Sabota. That was um, exactly what I was looking for. So thank you. Okay. Motion, there. support, call the roll. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. So our next item is removal of a commission member from the Parks Commission. Um, and as you're all aware, Mr. our um, city attorney sent a letter and there was no response as of this afternoon? That is correct, uh, Madam Mayor. There was no response. I did check uh, with um, our firm's uh, email uh, system um, because this letter was emailed, also emailed to uh, the individual and as of uh, 4.30 this afternoon, I had no response received. Mm. All right, so uh, we would need a motion to remove uh, Mr. Bob Barker from the Parks Commission, please. Madam Mayor, I motion to remove Bob Barker from the Parks Commission. Support. support. Move and support it. Please call the roll. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. And then the next item to follow that is the appointment to the Parks Commission to take his place. And you all received uh, the different people that had applied back in July. And I did call um, Elizabeth um, Percola. Um, she goes by the name of Beth. And um, asked her if she was still interested. And she said yes. So I'd like to. Um, um, approve her or appoint her to the Parks Commission. This is a mayor's appointment. So I'm going to entertain a motion to appoint this lady to the Parks Commission. Mm -hmm. I guess, Madam Mayor, I want to know why was she called before everybody else? Um, she wasn't called before everybody else. She applied back in July. We're looking for somebody that has um, um, a good familiarity with the city. She's been a resident of East Point for 15 years. She's a retired elementary school teacher. So I think she has a good idea of what's needed as far as recreation for children. 
She walks in Spindler Park on a routine day, four to five mornings a week, so she knows what goes on in our park. And she also has five children and nine grandchildren, so I think she's familiar with um, parks and recreation in this city. Um, Miss Madam Mayor, just um, to clarify too, I did, um, before our last, previous meeting, I reached out to um, all the applicants that are not presently sitting on another border commission, mm -hmm. and I called them, and um, no, none of the other applicants had returned my phone calls. Oh, really? So with that, Madam Mayor, I motion to appoint Elizabeth Percola to the Parks Commission to fill an unexpired term ending July 31st, 2020. Support. Support. Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido. Yes. Council Member DeMonico. Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld. Yes. Council Member Owens. Yes. Mayor Pixley. Yes. And our next item would be uh, related to the Motorola equipment. And there is a motion, I believe. In bold at the bottom. Um, in bold face down at the bottom. You can see it resolved at the East Point City Council. And Mr. Sabota or Mr. Rohib want to say anything? Uh, since the director's here and has been quiet all meeting, I think I'll give him a chance to at least express his thoughts about something. Thank you, Mr. Sabota. You're welcome. You want to turn your microphone on so we it's can on. hear it? Yes. You just got to speak into it. Good evening, Council. Um, this, this is a budgeted item, the uh, Motorola Prep radios. We are requesting the purchase of 30 of them and two mobile radios. There'll be some chargers involved with the purchase, some batteries and microphones. Our current radios right now are 10 years old. They are outdated. Motorola does not make parts for them. So we're investing money in repairs that um, it's, it's getting somewhat expensive. Right now, Motorola is offering an incentive, just as I proposed when I brought the fire department radios to you at the last council meeting. Um, the incentive is to until December 15th, and we're virtually saving approximately $1,500 per radio. Now, do we need more than 30 radios? Probably, but we have a number of radios that are still working properly, so I thought 30 was the proper amount to ask for. Um, there's also included in these radios is the radio fees for programming and templating. The state of Michigan, once we receive the radios, we forward the radios over to the state of Michigan radio department. They charge $250 per radio. It's a one-time fee that, e that equates to $8,000 and also the county charges us a $75 fee per radio, which would be approximately $2,400. So I just wanted you to know that that's in addition to the purchase from Motorola, which is a, um, a single source vendor. And the funding for all of this comes out of the drug forfeiture fund, is that correct? Yes, Mayor, it does. For the total amount? Correct. And does um, Sarisa charge at all per radio? No, they don't. We just pay the the county a fee and the state a fee for templating it and for programming. So why is the fee so much more with the state? There's more involved to it. It uh, actually the state it takes anywhere from I heard 60 to 90 days per radio just or not per radio but per batch. Um, it just there's a lot involved in programming and if you know a lot about radios and templating it, we have to make certain in each radio there's uh, there's zones, zone A, B, C, and there's many channels. They have to program in from different surrounding communities so we can talk to all our neighbors. And these radios are phenomenal. We can talk to somebody from Ohio on these things. Back in the days, once you left your city, you were done, you couldn't speak. But this is a vital piece of equipment for both police and fire. I mean, without these radios, it's, it's like not having a firearm or a fire truck. But um, So, and then December 16, these would essentially cost 1500 more each? Yes, sir. 15th is the cutoff date. Yeah. Motorola, once in a great while, they will off, offer a deal. So this is a perfect opportunity okay. to take advantage of the deal. If not, we're going to end up spending figure 15, another could be $45,000. Sure. So. All right. Thanks. All right, motion. Madam Mayor, I motion to approve the purchase of Motorola radio equipment for the police department in the amount of 
$565 and the one-time MPSCS fee of $7,500. Support. Move and support it. Please call the roll. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. We'll move on to payroll and bills. Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the bills in the amount of $1,399,811.54. Support. <coughs> support. Any questions? Please call the roll. Council Member Kleinfeld? Yes. Council Member Lucido? Yes. Council Member Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Council Member DeMonico? Yes. Let's move on to the second hearing of the public. Does anyone wish to be heard? Mr. Lameau? We've missed you coming to council meetings. Huh? We've missed you coming to council meetings. Oh. Uh, as I told you earlier, I had a knee operation in 2015. It failed. It took them 18 months to realize it failed. And uh, it's taken me 18 months to learn how to walk again. Uh, screwed up my golf game. Uh, hopefully I can play this year. I ran a 40-man league. We traveled to 30-some different courses every year. And well, that's not why I'm up here. Um, <laughs> in regards to Gratiot, uh, I worked in the highway department for 40 years plus. I worked for AEW, and part of my job with them was to help coordinate paving. And what they did out there, and a few people paid for it, they suckered you into losing some money. Roseville has already said, if this is how you're going to pave our road, we don't want it. And at this time, it's in advance. Uh, and again, they have the same engineering firm you do, I think. And uh, they, everybody kind of goes along with it. It was shoddy, quick, and nothing. Um, in regards to some other things, there's a lot of vacant homes. Um, the city. The police department, the building corporation division are taking care of them well. We're very happy with that. I've got a lot of bunch of nice neighbors. I don't know if you guys live over in Joanne and Joanne. I'm in Detroit now, mm. Lincoln and Virginia, but uh, everything is going good. Uh, not last year, but the year before, we had 40 gang members fight in front of my house. I called 9/11 took me 15 minutes to explain to them, I ain't going out there and seeing what kind of weapons they got. <laughs> and finally, the police department did come because uh, across the street I had, at that time, Greg Brown. Uh, his wife had somehow called in and our guys came and uh, got them all. 22 of them went to jail on wants and warrants. So, mm -hmm. and the house that it started from is no longer a family house or a um, where they keep kids. We're thankful for that. The house over on Redmond just by the opposite the convent is also gone thanks to our police department. And you guys are doing good. Mr. Sabota, welcome. Thank you. Nice to hear somebody talk about things admit their misgivings or shortness, and I know you're gonna do a good job. If these guys give you a hard time, just call me. <laughs> I know where they live. Have a nice day, folks. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Karen Murray, Janice Point resident, and as I stated earlier, I would conclude with the comments regarding the uh, petting zoos. Um, so once again, um, there was brief discussion about having animal control. I can tell you the animal control officers I've spoken with do not support petting zoos. So I think you're gonna be hard pressed trying to get animal control to get on board with you in regards to this. Also, an alternative um, was brought to my attention about 
if you want to do an alternative, put the cost of animal control in the permit. I'll tell you right there, that's going to shut those damn petting zoos down because the petting zoos do not want animal control anywhere near them. Why? Because it's all about profit and gain. They don't give a damn about the animals. They purposely underfeed them and underwater them because they don't want to clean up after them. The regulations that we have are worthless. There's so much neglect going on, and these petting zoos are not being held accountable. And if you want to go the animal control route, what are you going to do when animal control is sick or there's an emergency, or they quit, what are you going to do? You've got nothing. You can't rely on the police to fill in for animal control. We already know they don't have the proper training that animal control has. They don't know how to spot neglect. I've been working with rabbits for over 25 years. I know the neglect. I've worked with other animals. I know the neglect. If everyone's so concerned about children having an educational experience with livestock animals, we've got two sanctuaries in Michigan, Sasha Farm and Barn Sanctuary. Those are all rescued livestock. And there are public event days that the children can go out there and visit the animals in their natural setting, living their lives as they should be. They're not being exploited. They're not being abused. They're not being neglected. What do petting zoos do? It's all about profit and gain. These animals are being dragged all over the place in overcrowded trailers that are hot. There's no air conditioning. They're smelly. There's no telling if they're secure. They're standing in urine and feces. They're not spectacles that you put on public display. The other cities are working on banning petting zoos. And rather than more regulation, we need to do away with these petting zoos because they cause fear, agitation, and stress for animals because they're cage transported, they're left in the hot sun, and handled by crowds of strangers with no escape from them. Do not encourage animal exploitation for profit and gain. Don't support animal neglect and cruelty. Do a full ban on the petting zoos because compassion starts with the animals. I will leave you with the saying from Tolstoy, as long as there are slaughterhouses, there will be battlefields. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Mr. Creech. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Harvey Creech, resident of East Point. Yeah, listening through here, I know my hearing's really getting bad and, and compared to what was out here you know, on the outside of it, but I would more or less like to know some more information from uh, Mr. Albright about the nonprofit. And as far as, as rare goes to, to the, the, the five-year plan, they've had one for quite some time. Matter of fact, I was talking to Ryan Cotton just before he left, and he was saying the same thing about it for writing grants. You know, he was up for it, but in order to be independent, I, I said this once before, too, in order to be two different plans, and I've even, we discussed this with the mayor. You know, I mean, they, rare is rare in East Detroit as parks. So you can't write, you can't write a grant and a plan if, if you both belong together. So you're going to have to become independent, which I said uh, quite some time ago, and get this lines of demarcation laid out or it's not going to work at all. And then, and the one question I would really like to ask, and, and, and please help me out here. I hope I'm not really talking out of turn, but when I really, when I talked to Mr. Sabota, you know, he was saying the same thing about it that we have a, a little bit of a, 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 well, just a problem. Period. You know, like for money. You know, and when he says the city is 31 million dollars in debt, because I asked him the same thing about it. Now that we have a general fund, and you can't, and we can't get a breakdown of who owns what or who, where, what is spent where, and here, and here, and here. Like I said, if, if we have a plan, I've asked too many times, and especially even with, uh, with Sarah, what kind of money, what kind of a budget do you have for the recreation department? No one seems to know. And, it, and, and, and Mr. Sabota said it was $211,000. And he said, yes, but no, it's there, but it's not there. And then, as I said before, too, he said, you know, Mr. Creek, he says, the city does need 11 police cars. 
Now, where the money's going to come from, that's up to the city council. And as I said, excuse me, in, in, in the, the, the gentleman right here comes up and he says, we need $85,000 worth of radios and things like this. And he said it comes out of drug forfeiture. I thought we discussed this quite some time before when we looked at it, that the new cars were coming out of drug forfeiture. I'm at the point right now, I don't know where some of this money's coming from or where it's really going. And every time I seem to ask a question, no one seems to really know. The money is there one day and it's not there the next. Because I asked the same question there before, too, when, when they split up on 8 Mile Road. You know, when the money was split between half and half, was it going to the parks? Well, apparently it wasn't, because it's not in the audit, it's not you in the You have budget. 30 seconds. And I thank you, and I asked the same difference. If we get $60,000 a year now from there, and 15% and, and of it was supposed to go to CIP, what was the rest of it going? Well, apparently, as long as all this money keeps getting put back in the general fund, no one is ever going to be able to know what we've got what we've got to work with and the rest of this stuff. So I would appreciate it too. And, and Mr. Savote, I apologize if I stepped out of line and I said that for the 11 cars that we do need because of the charter or, you know what I'm saying, the same thing about it. Your but, time is up. Okay, you can't keep robbing Peter because Paul's going to get sore. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does anyone else wish to be heard? Anyone else? All right. Second hearing in the public is closed. We'll move on to mayor and council reports. Let's start with you, Mr. Klingfeld. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first, I, I want to extend my condolences to uh, Steve Sellers uh, and his family for the passing of his father. Um, I know a few of us were able to stop in at his wake. Uh, <laughs> on Monday, the 10th, uh, Mr. Sabota mentioned there's an ACDC meeting. It will be at the Patriot Building in Spindler Park. Um, at 7 p.m. and it's open to the public so if you're interested come on by and obviously tomorrow we have the tree lighting I think all of council will be there so I'll see you, you all then and I hope uh, you folks at home can make it out and uh, I do want to say thank you for everyone who came out to speak on the medical marijuana I don't think I've ever seen the audience that full before so uh, it, it was nice to actually get some input. I think last time, about a year ago or so, we tried to do the same thing, and it was maybe a quarter of the people who came and spoke. So thank you to everyone. And that's it. Ms. Cecilia? Um, first, I would like to welcome back Mayor Pixley. I'm happy that she is healing up, and she's out and about and driving now, so that's exciting. Um, also, I would like to thank everyone that came out this evening to our public hearing. I really do appreciate all the input um, and all the information that we had also received. Um, and then just, I hope I see everyone out tomorrow for our tree lighting. It's always a great event. It's especially fun for the kids, but all the adults usually have a good time too. And I think that's all I have for this evening. All right, thank you. Ms. Owens. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and welcome back. Um, I want to thank everybody that came out tonight. Um, I, I wish we just had this big of a crowd when we had the Narcan training and the drug coalition that we have at the old schoolhouse. Um, that would be nice if people were more involved in um, saving lives than getting high. Um, also, December 5th, which is tomorrow, is the tree lighting. I'm excited about that. We have a, a lot of new people that is, has been added to that. We have someone's playing jazz. We have some characters and things like that. So that's going to be really nice. So make sure you come out and let people know about it. Hopefully the crowd that we had today, they will come out tomorrow. Um, also December 10th um, is the 4-H program that we have at the middle school. And we will be learning about the military. So all the kids will be in Army fatigue, green and black. And then after that, um, that weekend, we'll be at the military museum as a field trip to, you know, um, as to learn what we learn, we want to put that into experience and let them actually see it. And hopefully I can get the guy who work, you know, some of the Army guys to come out and talk to the kids about um, what it means to be in the Army and, you know, what they do and give, you know, some, some information about that. So that's what the 4-H is about. It's more than just agriculture and pets and things like that. It's about letting these kids learn about so many different things. So I'm proud to be a part of that. Um, also, going towards the uh, petting zoos, I'm going to touch on that. I don't want to be too long on that. But um, she, you mentioned a, you know, a, a ordinance. Now that is something that would be in consideration for a petting zoo than just banning it. I grew up 
with petting zoos. My kids love petting zoos. The community loves petting zoos. I don't think we had any complaints about petting zoos since it's been here. If you, um, I think the director uh, researched that. Um, I know you mentioned that some of these pets are out of their habitat, but if you go to the zoo, I mean, most of those are endangered species. So, I mean, we need to work on that. I don't think, you know, a lot of those uh, pets at the zoo belong there as well. But um, that's just a whole different conversation. So I just thank everybody for coming out. Um, let's continue to um, support the city. Um, a, a lot of you that's in here, we, will, we need people on the commission. Sign up. Um, come out tomorrow. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeMonico. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, welcome back. And condolences to uh, Steve Sellers and his family uh, for the passing of his dad. Uh, thanks to everyone for coming out. Thanks to the 26 people that just docked at hearing the public uh, about uh, marijuana regulations and uh, bringing businesses to East Point. I look forward to our discussion at the next meeting, which like our very next meeting next week, not our next regular meeting. Uh, we have an audit presentation and then we'll uh, discuss this on that agenda also. So come on out, hear about our finances, and then hear about marijuana regulations. Uh, also, I hope everyone's paying attention to their state legislature because in this lame duck session, they're doing, trying to do all kinds of things. Um, the, the majority in the legislature is trying to essentially usurp local control in all kinds of ways, which seems contrary to um, the majority's typical stance on government where it's less government. But uh, for example, we have a humane pet ordinance where we weren't allow, where we don't allow uh, dogs, cats, rabbits, and ferrets to be sold in the city only if they are from shelters. So Petco has only got shelter animals, not any animals from a, uh, you know, what you would call a uh, um, puppy mill. Uh, so the legislature is essentially trying to say that they are allowed and locals can't ban them. That's one example. They're trying to do all kinds of things like that. Um, there are bills to gut the proposals that everyone in the state just passed by very large margins. I think all three pro proposals really. Uh, so send some messages to your senators and representatives um, and make sure this doesn't happen. This seems to come up every lame duck. This one seems to be a lot more um, interesting than usual and, and not in a good way. So please pay attention to that. Come out to our holiday tree lighting tomorrow at seven o'clock here at City Hall, and then come to our audit meeting next week. We're starting at 6 p.m. for that. That'll be next Tuesday. And then also the high school's doing their holiday concert on the 13th at seven o'clock at the high school. And I think that's all, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to tell everybody how glad I am to come back. Um, this has been the first knee surgery, Mr. Lameau. My first knee surgery was in April, and I recovered from that. But um, the problem was my foot, and it took a long time. So I've essentially been without, unable to walk until last week, Friday. So um, I was really excited. I haven't driven a car since last September. I told Mr. Ruib um, that. I was hoping that no police officer was following me because, man, I had that pedal to the metal. I was so excited to get out of that house. So the first thing I did was come down and talk to Mr. Sabota. The next thing I did was to go and talk to Mr. Rureb about um, various things. I was so glad to get out of the house yesterday. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate are some of the businesses that um, take into consideration our local residents. And many of those residents are having some hard times. And one of the restaurants that um, you just have to praise is Donna's at 10 Mile and Kelly because on Thanksgiving Day from 12 to 3, they opened um, and all their staff was there. They gave all their time and they served 250 plates of Thanksgiving turkey and all to anybody that walked in the door. That's an exceptional amount of food that was given out to our local residents. Actually, anybody that came. And all the servers also provided none of the tip. They wouldn't accept any tips. So I think that was a really good way for people to show 
thanks to all. And any food that was left over was taken to the veterans, the homeless veterans place up on um, on Gratiot on the other side. I always want to say it's on the other side of Randazzo, so, but you all know where that is. Um, about the petting zoo, um, I'm not quite sure that the Lions Club are even going to do the Harvest Festival again because of the discussion that's been going on. Um, it's sad. Um, we've had as many as three to 500 people there. Um, we, had, we took videos beforehand of all the care that was given to the animals, of all the water, uh, everything else that was there. So we took a lot of care to be sure that those animals were treated right, um, that they had their time off, that they had water, that they had food. And, um, and the other thing is they came from a farmer and the farmer vaccinates all of their animals. So the farmer took good care that none of these strange zootics would be transferred. But going back to our animal control in our city, I'm so excited about having our animal control officer. And even though he's part time, I think he's got some great ideas and he seems to be covering a lot of our problems. But the bottom line is we still have a lot of people that are ignoring the ordinances that we have in place. Mr. Ruib told me the other day that he saw a house that had five dogs at one house, five dogs at one house with a lot 60 foot wide. So that violates our animal control. There was not even an application for a kennel. But I see every single day on Facebook, there's got to be five to 10 dogs that are lost. They're lost, they have nowhere to go. And it seems as though as soon as somebody goes to work, the dog gets out and runs around. None of these dogs have chips in them. And most of the dogs, they don't have their collars on and they don't have their license tag. The last time that, and it was two years ago, I believe, that we did canvassing for our animals before animal licenses were due, which is in March. And I think we picked up, or when they knocked on door, there were about 3,000 dogs in this city that were not, were not licensed, number one. And those that were licensed, or of those that were not licensed, many of them, when they came in for their license, they had gone to the vet the day before to get their vaccinations. So that scares me much more than a petting zoo because you have these dogs out there, dogs and cats that are running around that don't have the necessary vaccinations. So every year we're gonna be doing this so that we can keep up with all the animals. But please watch it. If you have an animal, you see an animal that's on the loose, it's nice to take a picture and put it on Facebook and complain in East Point residents. But by God, it sure would help this city if you call the police department and talk to animal control or at least tell them where the dog is located so they can go out and find the dog. Many of those dogs that are loose on the west side of the city are going over into Warren. So we have to be really careful. A good neighbor is an observant neighbor. And besides looking for the different types of criminal, you're also looking out for the animals of this city. So please, please watch out for that. And council, um, I guess all of us are going to the police reserve dinner coming up. And um, Mr. Rupp told me yesterday that um, we have a number of new police reserve officers. So um, I think that's pretty exciting. So I. I thought the dinner last year was really, really nice. It gives us an opportunity to thank um, the police reserves for, or the reserve officers for all the work they do for the city. So um, I'm not gonna talk anymore, but I wanna tell you, I am so excited that I can finally stand up and walk. <laughs> um, you have no idea what it's like to be bumming around a house with your, on your knees, so. Um, anyway, I will entertain a motion to go into closed session. And Madam Mayor, before that motion is made, I would like to inform the public that council will probably come back and actually take action. So if anyone's interested in sticking around to see what we do, uh, we will be back. So I'll entertain a motion I'll, to go into closed session. I'll make please. a motion to go into closed session to discuss uh, pending litigation. Support. We can support. Please call the roll. Councilmember Kleinfeld? Yes. Councilmember Owens? Yes. Mayor Pixley? Yes. Councilmember DeMonico? Yes. Councilmember Lucido? Yes. 
into closed session in five minutes.